As many of you already know, I recently got a new puppy. This has led some to wonder what made me pick an American Pit Bull Terrier as my dog of choice. Some have assumed erroneously that this puppy was acquired due to me losing my good dog Shirney back on the 6th of March 2021. Truth of the matter is, I was planning on getting a pit bull almost a year before Shirney died. I just hadn't found the right puppy yet. As with all of my dogs, my new pit bull Bindi has a very specific position I'm hoping for her to play on my team of dogs. Much like in sports where each player has a different position to play, each of my dogs has a specific set of skills and abilities that allows them to each play a different position on my team. If every player was only good at being a goalkeeper, the team would never score a point. However, if the whole team was made up of center forwards who are only good at scoring points, then there would be no one protecting the goal from the other team. A successful team in sports requires a group of people with very different skill sets and abilities playing various different positions in order to form a team that as a whole can win games. The same applies to my team of dogs. Boss is fast, powerful, and clever. He knows where the rats are most likely to run before they even appear out of their holes. And with his long athletic legs, he's able to get there quicker than any other dog I have. He's also the muscle when it comes to pulling a raccoon out of a hole, handling the raccoon in deep water, which is incredibly difficult for smaller dogs. And even on land, the smaller dogs have a pretty hard time dispatching a raccoon on their own. So having a big, powerful 65 pound boss to help them dispatch a rough raccoon is super helpful. Also, when the smaller dogs are working in the thick brush looking for a raccoon, boss will often wait out in the open, ready to snatch any raccoon who's trying to sneak away. Since they're in the thick brush themselves, whatever dogs happen to be working the brush can't see the raccoon sneaking away. Same goes for when a dog's digging up rats. It's hard to see an escaping rat when your face is down in the dirt digging. Smaller terrier type dogs, like 22 pound Leia and 14 pound Gremlin, are able to fit in tight spots that great big dogs struggle to fit in. So when it comes to working thick brush, squeezing down pipes, and entering underground burrows, the smaller the dog the better. Also, since these smaller dogs are so slow at running, they might as well be the ones up close to the holes digging and let the taller, faster dogs stand back and snatch up anything they happen to miss. These smaller terrier type dogs need to have useful noses in order to locate hidden rats that need to be dug up or follow the trail of a raccoon who's traveling through thick brush. Shirni was what I like to call my right hand dog. She was supposed to be a little bit of everything. My jack of all trades, master of none. At 65 pounds, she was big and powerful enough to be a muscle like Boss, but you know, not quite as powerful nor near as gritty as Boss is. She had long legs, making her much faster than the Terriers, but she wasn't near as fast as Boss, which makes sense when you consider the fact that Boss is mostly Greyhound and Whippet. She was more than happy to push brush like a terrier to find a hidden raccoon, but her larger size made it difficult to be as efficient at working through the brush as my wiry little terriers. You know, I said earlier that Shirney was a jack of all trades, master of none, but in reality she did have her own special talents that she was way better at than all my other dogs. Shirney's main specialties were her willingness to please and her nose. I could ask her to find anything, not just something hunting related. My terrier type dogs and even boss can follow the trail of a raccoon or find a hidden rat, but neither of them would find a lost mink or child if I asked them to. Hunting was pretty much the only activity they were interested in, so asking them to work to find something they couldn't kill after finding it was simply something they were not interested in doing. I could also ask her to do silly little things like putting dead rats in a bucket or achieve random objects or carrying a mink box for me. All of those behaviors, though possible to train any dog, are much more difficult to train a dog who doesn't have super high desire to please the way Shirni did. Just like going down holes is natural and normal for terrier breeds, having a high desire to please is normal among herding breeds like Malinois, Dutch Shepherds, German Shepherds, and Border Collies. A little over two years ago, I noticed a new position that would be helpful to fill in my team. 
When we are doing pest control jobs for raccoons, we often run into situations where we could use a dog just as big or a little bit bigger than Leia, but with a lot more punch. Boss does a great job at being the muscle of the team, but his large size prevents him from entering certain tight spaces, like smaller holes and drainage pipes. He also sometimes struggles at getting through the thick brush to help a terrier finish off a raccoon. So I started thinking about all the potential breeds or mixed breeds who would be the right size and have the right characteristics to excel at this position on our team. The dog needed to be under 35 pounds, preferably under 30 pounds, if we could find a dog strong enough to still excel at the job despite their smaller size. The smaller the dog, the tighter the holes they could fit into, but the bigger the dog, the more power they naturally will have. So finding a balance between being small enough to fit in holes, yet powerful enough to manhandle a raccoon on their own, would be a bit of a tightrope we would have to walk. After a lot of research and pondering, I finally decided on March 30th, 2020, that I wanted to try and find just the right pit bull to fill this position. To further clarify what kind of dog I was looking for, I need to point out that what most people think of as a pit bull is not actually a pit bull. I don't really want to give a big long lecture and discourse on what makes a real pit bull versus a pop culture pit bull, but I will hit on a few details to clear up some common misconceptions. First misconception is most people think of pit bulls as a much larger dog than they typically are. Though the breed has an incredible wide range of sizes, the majority of pit bulls typically weigh between 25 to 60 pounds. So when somebody claims they have an 80 pound pit bull, there's a good chance it's not really a pit bull. Another misconception is that pit bulls are really stocky with wide chests and huge heads. Though there certainly are stocky pit bulls out there, the majority of dogs with overly wide chests and huge heads are not really pit bulls at all. Though there definitely is a lot of variation in the breed, pit bulls tend to be more leggy and athletic than what the general public typically thinks of when they hear the word pit bull. A true pit bull is typically an athlete, not super muscle bound and heavy boned. Ideally, a pit bull is both a powerful dog as well as having great stamina and being quick and agile. Most heavy boned muscle bound dogs you see on the streets are not actually pit bulls, despite what their owner might tell you. So in my particular case, I was searching for a very small, extra powerful, yet quick and athletic pit bull. I was wanting a young puppy that I could raise from a young age so as to hopefully avoid dog aggression between my new pit bull and my other dogs. I was very particular about wanting to find a puppy from just the right set of parents, and I took my time doing my research rather than just rushing out and getting the first puppy I could find. After about a year into my search for just the right pit bull puppy, we suffered a terrible loss in our family. Shirni, my right hand dog, the one who I relied on for so much for what I do, was struck by a car and killed on impact. Now I was left not only missing my good friend, but also a valuable companion who helped me with my everyday various pest control jobs. At this point I began to wonder if a pit bull was really the next dog I wanted, after this terrible loss of a valuable member of my team. I didn't want to get two puppies at the same time, but I was struggling to decide if I should get another dog like Shirni, if I should just move forward with my original plans and get a pit bull, or if I should do something totally different, like maybe get a Drothar instead. For a time I was quite torn, and put a lot of thought and prayer into the decision on what I should do moving forward. After all, this was more than just a personal decision, it was also a business decision. I had a team of pest control dogs to run, and I needed to decide what player would be best to recruit for my team. I wanted another dog who could be my right hand dog, like Shirni. A dog who is smart and willing to please, a dog who had a handy nose and would be willing and able to track anything I asked her to, regardless of whether it was an animal we were hunting or something else like a lost mink. But I also still had a need for a dog who could basically be my mini muscle position on my team, small enough to fit down holes and in tight places, yet be a powerful enough dog to handle a rough raccoon on her own. Neither a Drothar nor a Malinois were going to be small enough to fill the mini muscle position on my team, but there was a chance that a pit bull could fill both positions. 
Though pit bulls have not been bred for using their noses, they do typically have a high desire to please, and many individuals are quite intelligent. So with enough hard work from myself, and if I pick just the right puppy, there was a chance that I might possibly find a pit bull puppy that would grow to fill both roles. So I decided to double down on my efforts to find just the right pit bull puppy. And then when I finally got that puppy, I would have to double down on my efforts to raise and train that puppy just right in an attempt to raise a puppy that could fill both positions left open on my team. So there you have it. That's my big, long, epic story as to why I decided to get a pit bull and what I plan on doing with her. So far, she is showing great promise when it comes to using her nose and learning various commands. So over the next year or so, I will be striving to mold little Bindi Spike into my future right-hand dog and hope that she will also end up being the right size while simultaneously having the necessary physical abilities to become my mini-muscle.